So let's get started. You know, firstly, I'm really excited to welcome everyone to Curiosity's Q3 product update webinar. We've got some awesome AI related updates to show off today. And, and you know, it's my pleasure to introduce a couple of, a few of my colleagues and today's speakers. Firstly, uh, George Bundle, Curiosity's product manager. Today, George will showcase an overview of recent updates and new features added to Modeler. Ben Riley, Chief Product Officer at Curiosity, is also here. Ben is here to talk about enterprise test data AI and answer any test data related questions you may have. Ben will also have some help from Shash Mishra. Shash is Curiosity's co-founder and CSA. He's here to show off some of the latest innovations in our data pipelines. Uh, so thank you all for joining and presenting today. Before I pass it off to Ben Riley, uh, you know, I'd just like to give everyone a quick overview of our product update webinars. The key objective of our product update webinars is to keep you, the users, informed and up to date about all the great stuff our developers are doing. This in turn will hopefully help you get the most out of our software and give you the chance to talk directly to our developers and other users. Therefore, I want to encourage you to leave questions, talk in the chat, and invite your colleagues who might be interested to future updates. Additionally, this will help us shape the future of our products, keep them user-centric, and make sure we're on the right track. We hope you enjoyed this update and all the awesome things we're doing with AI, and we'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback. So please get in touch with us after the product update. So without further ado, I'd like to hand it off to Ben Riley, who's going to present or finish a bunch of awesome updates. Yeah. Yeah, off you go. Fantastic. Thank you, Mentas. Um, so I will do the classic of sharing my screen and then just ask for a little bit of confirmation. Um, thumbs up. That's yeah. all good. Yeah, yeah. All good. All good. Um, so, so I think it's just important a little bit of context when we're, we're talking about a lot of our innovations around the product, we are, um, really trying to focus on, uh, outer loop problems. Um, if you're not familiar with this, we sort of see across the market that the inner loop has been heavily invested in and the outer loop all the supporting activities that a developer and their productivity can kind of get into is sort of a little bit um, unloved, uh, underfunded, and actually sort of impacts your business. And so if you want to really get the most out of that um, in a loop process, this is one of the areas that we um, really want to kind of put our time into. Um, so AI, it is a bit of a hot topic, but I think it's important to kind of start and actually I'm going to show off quite a lot of the, the things that we can do here. First of all, we've put a lot of time into thinking about how to leverage AI in a sort of sensible manner. Um, we collect a lot of data, we collect a lot of um, stored information across databases and file types and so on and so forth. And, and for, for me and the company, it's really important to understand that actually that glossary of terms is um, a, sort of a huge value when it comes to understanding how you use your data, where it lives. Um, and actually, if you're new into a business or even if you've been at business for a long time, understanding what your data landscape looks like and being able to interrogate it's really important and to be able to do that in a manner that's quite easy so being able to sort of use natural language be able to do it quickly um these are some of the goals for sort of our ai um sort of stage one or phase one whereabouts we are at the moment we also recognize that there's a ton of deep technical knowledge that sits in individuals right so you've got smes you've got people who know your business very well and we want to sort of start to leverage that inside the product and give people sort of the the ability to have AI as sort of a bit of a co-pilot, a bit of a friend that they can ask questions for, that we can do sort of sensible activities around, sort of give them um, a ton of value from, from learned experience, right? And from the AI learning from your systems and the things that they do. Um, we also have a, a huge amount of power in terms of our synthetic data generation engine and rules. So actually, you know, making sure you're using the right stuff inside our product. We leverage a bit of AI for that. Um, and then finally, you know, we see that models and the structure that models provide are a, um, a hugely valuable way of being able to represent data, represent system logic, and then make sure that, you know, you are, uh, I think, generating data in a manner that, that meets your requirements sort of properly, correctly, um, with sort of high levels of coverage and all that sort of stuff. So that's what I'm going to walk through. Um, and I will show a, show a few bits off. Okay, so um, as part of our data dictionary now, what we've embedded is um, our AI. So uh, what I'm going to go to here is our Curiosity Bank demo that I have. And you'll notice in the top right hand corner, we've got our AI assistant. 
Um, the assistant's going to go and do various details, so you can obviously query it, use a lot of um, sort of chat to data or uh, natural language. Um, just go and talk to it, right? So um, it's uh, very straightforward. What I've asked it to do is just go and have a look at these sort of series of tables. Um, they are reasonably well named, so you know it's not uh, uh, it's not a complete minefield. But it, this is just going to give me sort of my logical representation, and it's going to go and tell me about the details and the foreign keys and that sort of stuff. So that's all fantastic. Um, if we actually go into a version, um, and we're going to go and pick on a particular schema in this one, we're going to go. And uh, look at our sort of uh, six tables, six, six columns, again, not, not a ton to it. We actually get more um, abilities to interact. So uh, in the background here, this is obviously sitting on top of an actual database. Um, and we'll go and query that database in a little bit. But I'm given these sort of um, five prompts, five suggestions of things that we would suggest you do. One of them I've already completed, which is this AI metadata generation. Um, so uh, if, we, if we just go back and compare to my Right, there's not a ton of detail here. Account holders, you probably get an idea of what that is, but actually when you go into it, there's only a couple of IDs. Um, most databases that I've ever come across are sort of normally named slightly more obscurely. There might be a few rational tables in there, but there's often a lot of sort of, uh, you know, TAM001, TAM002 sort of tables. And so when you've got thousands of them, it's quite difficult to understand what's going on. But as here, we've now put ourselves in a position where actually we're using AI to go and tell us and become sort of a, um, a bit of like an associated uh, helper or a virtual assistant, um, co-pilot, whatever term you want to use, uh, to help us with this. Uh, what it also does is it, it's going to tag where it finds it, where it thinks it's found sort of personal information. So great for sensitive data. So if you need to go and do some masking, you need to go and, you know, if you're searching for PII, it's a really good way of being able to kind of go and do that. Um, but of, you can just ask it to um, do things for you. So um, if we ask it to uh, find some PII in here, it's going to go and perform that prompt. It's going to go and scan through these tables. Um, you'll see in the top right corner as it's going and performing the prompt query, it will progress through the tables as it goes and does its analysis. And then based on that analysis, it's going to go and tell us things like, so in the customer's table and in the credit card's table, we've got credit card numbers, um, we've got CV, CVV codes, um, codes on the back of your card, that sort of stuff. First name, last name, email, so on and so forth. So <clears throat> it's a nice way of being able to interrogate and work with a system that you're potentially not familiar with at all. Um, what it's also really good for doing is actually, you, we don't know, uh, you know, I haven't shown you at the moment what database in the background. It could be Oracle, SQL, Postgres. You might have picked it up on one of the earlier screens. Um, but actually, having not having any of that knowledge doesn't matter, right? So... Uh, what we're using is we're trying to get people's um, natural language and their business language um, and we're leveraging AI to help us get records in that database in a manner that they, they want to be able to get a test with, right? So, for example, create me a customer uh, called uh, Brian uh, Davies, right? So uh, just make that up on the fly. Um, what I want that to do is just go and put a record into my system that I can go and use for something. Um, now, I could have given it more details. I could have added in that I wanted accounts that Brian Davis needs two credit cards and some transactions and, and so on and so forth. Um, but what this has given me firstly is the SQL statement, right? So it's saying this is actually how to go and do it. But actually, um, uh, if I use the right language, just tell it to execute it, um, it will go and do that for me. So again, I don't need to know how to create insert statements or I don't know what tables, I don't know what foreign keys potentially or other things need to be um, sort of embedded here. The AI is going to take control of that. Um, uh, what it's also going to tell me is actually if there's mandatory fields, right? So there's a constraint and these date of birth. Um, you choose the day of birth. Uh, again, if I'm doing some testing, I'm probably being a bit more specific over this, right? I'm asking for... Uh, a particular person with a particular set of criteria behind them but actually this becomes something that is now a really easy way for somebody to a not have to go and do this for a front-end UI uh, have to learn SQL or, or go and pick up some coding languages and so on and so forth um, and now I've got a record that I can go and test with um, for, uh, give me the customer ID so I'm going to want to go and find Brian. I could probably search in my front end for, for a Brian Davies, and that's that's absolutely fine. But, you know, there's 
as people start to learn how to interact with um, some of these these different LLMs, um, you will find there are better or worse prompts, or there are things that it will automatically give you, or there are better questions to ask and not. I, I say we're at the point where we're still trying to uh, work that out that works the best with all of the catalogued information that we have, all of the databases, all of the structure that we have. Um, gives us a really nice way of being able to go and interact with systems. So let's just go and have a look at this uh, in the database. So uh, if you're wondering, I'm using a Postgres database in the background here. Um, we will go and query our database anyway and have a bit of a look and we can see that Brian Davis has been added. I also see that Brian doesn't have a phone number, email and address, right? So um, give Brian uh, an email address and phone number. Um, so, you know, as a simple example of just being able to get some data into to a DB, this is fantastic, right? Um, it, it, we don't have to learn any of those skills, as I kind of mentioned. Um, what's, I think, most interesting when it comes to data generation and data in general is coverage. So if there's a record in this particular um, system that is unique to us for whatever reason, it's got a high transaction count, got a number of credit cards that are rare, it's those sorts of scenarios, I think, that are, are really important. Um, so they've up, it's been updated, so Brian should now have a phone number and uh, an email address and that sort of stuff. So that's, that's brilliant. Um, we're, I'm gonna reset this screen and we're just gonna now just have a look at the, a couple of the other prompts. Okay, so we've, we've cleared this off. Let's just talk through a few of the others. Uh, I'm not gonna go into all of them, but identify keys is gonna look for additional foreign keys and soft keys. So if you've got relationships between databases that don't aren't enforced, it's a really nice way of being able to reverse engineer. You know, if you update one table, what else do you need to consider? If you're updating, you know, Brian in one table, but Brian's details are in three or four tables, you wanna make sure we're keeping all of those things consistent. Uh, if you wanna execute some SQL, that's fine. So um, find me a customer uh, in the database, I don't think I need to put that, um, with transa transactions over uh, thousand, um, something along those lines. Right, so uh, I'm gonna ask it to go and find me some of those, some of those elements. Um, whilst it's doing that, I should have opened up another screen, so let me just, I'd like just to walk you through a couple of the, uh, the other prompts as we sort of go. Um, there's obviously stuff in here you can, it is just an AI, so you can just ask it things, right? You can ask it to tell you a joke, and, and uh, I'm not saying that's its uh, best use case, but uh, these prompts are just designed to sort of help you get a little bit further on. So AI rule generation, well, that's going to do, it's going to go and apply rules to the database. So we've got synthetic data generation rules. Um, if we go and look at this card number as an example, um, it's applied a generation rule. So if you want to go and recreate or create jobs that can do sort of large scale uh, synthetic data, obviously I, I just asked for Brian to get added into the database. Um, but you know we are about reusability, about applying the right structure, about getting the right data into the right places. Make sure you've got the right generation rules in place. So we're leveraging AI to kind of help us do that. That's fantastic. Um, we're also looking at the metadata generation and then of course just SQL, right? If there's something that you want, so we're interacting with SQL databases here. We've got Postgres database, some, some Oracle, some uh, SQL server and so on and so forth. Um, but if, if we take a look at the example that I've asked for, so it, it's just given me this query, okay? So that's good. I can just ask it as I did before to execute that query. That's fantastic. Um, but I might just get into something a little bit more complex. So I think maybe just to sort of finish off here, um, uh, run this query, uh, give me the results in JSON. So as we look to the future, and as we look to how we can use this in a more transformational way, we recognize that you know we have a ton of value when it comes to um, using structured models, so visual models to help us sort of define a requirement or a process or how it should work. Um, those are really good for things like APIs. APIs are very structured. It's really good for um, uh, AI, oh, you know, too many AI and APIs are similar, but it's good for AI, right? Because AI loves structure. And so how we can merge these worlds together and you leverage them in a way that we get that clarity and that structure, we get ourselves to be, you know, 
working in terminology that we like and understand, and then also interact with environments. So I've just pulled a, you know, a, some customers out of a database. I've now got it in theory in the JSON payload. Um, what would be nice now is I could pull that up, stick it as part of a, a request response, and just go and fire that into my system to go and, and do whatever testing about transactions that I need to do. So just, I guess, a few ideas here about where we're taking this, how we're starting to approach AI around the, um, the data side. There's a ton of videos up on the website, so if there's more stuff you'd like to see or if you'd like a, a session to talk about this in more detail, feel free to reach out. But hopefully that, that all makes sense. I will pause here and then I will look to hand this over to Shash. Thanks, man. Um, that was uh, really nice. Uh, the AI assistant thing. All right, so uh, I'll talk more about uh, the pipeline and stuff. <clears throat> so we have, uh, in this update, uh, uh, there's quite a lot of focus on uh, enterprise test data pipelines. And uh, what it offers actually is uh, it allows us to change sequence of test data activities and uh, with the expandable list of actions, okay? And we'll go through a few pipelines. So I'll share my screen. Is it? Uh, yeah, perfect. I can see that. Yeah. All right. So, uh, without any further delay, I'll just go directly to uh, what it is, what it does, and how it can uh, be used to, uh, how it can be leveraged to give you more flexibility and work across different heterogeneous data sources and data targets. So, it is flowchart driven approach to call sequence of data, test data activities, which you have already built. Okay. And uh, with, there are multiple uh, actions already available and it is expendable. Okay. So, uh, I'll, uh, I'll share a few pipelines to start with. Okay. So, first of all, uh, what a pipeline offers is you, know, it's, uh, you create a pipeline. Okay. I'll start with the OT comp. OT complex data and make. Okay. Uh, can you guys see uh, the pipeline activity? Yes. I'm pretty sure I'm looking at the components, front specs, configuration. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, what it offers is we have uh, a pipeline. Okay. Now, there are different data activities we have already built. Okay. One is to create a set of complex data using all pairs or any combinatorial algorithm, okay, like combination, permutation. In this case, we are going to use all pairs, okay? So we have a set of, uh, uh, we have a, two activities. One is to generate all pairs data, okay? And the second one is to gen drive that, generate drive our generation, synthetic data generation process using the all pairs data that we have generated. Okay, so if I execute it and then I'll show how it is configured. Okay, so we have a test strategy which is pairwise. Okay, number of combination is two. It can be up to the number of uh, columns we have. And uh, we want to generate data in our uh, Postgres OT customer order item database. Okay, uh, we want one customer for each combination that we get. Okay, and we want our orders to be pending. Uh, we can specify minimum and maximum values. I'll leave it alone. And I want it to be one full different with the value of, say, 114. Okay. Now I'll execute this job. And meanwhile, I'll show what it is going to do for us. Okay. So this is a pipeline where you specify which systems you are going to work with and what exactly you are trying to do. Okay. Now we have this model where we are saying, generate me a complex data, okay? So we already have that data activity available with us, okay? And use this, use the generated data and drive our synthetic data generation process with this data, okay? Now you are chaining the activities together. You can take decisions, like uh, if this process fails, what we are supposed to do next okay there are different actions available here which you can use like uh, decision or invoke a process or assign some parameter values run some query against database and with file system you can create few files etc there there is um, stuff uh, to deal with the csv json etc so all the basic stuff this list is expandable and we are uh, 
uh, adding more actions every day. Okay, so uh, we used to do all this stuff using VIP. That was a Windows application. Now it has been completely moved to uh, to web. Okay, so that it's easier for end user to design and develop. All right now, uh, if we have a look at the artifacts that we use to generate our complex data set, okay, we used our order status and uh, refund details. Okay, so we, it has like uh, 14 rows in here, and we have 10 rows in our uh, order status column. Okay, so what it did, it created the pair for us from that particular details that we provided for both the columns, okay? And then it uh, generated, it create, uh, it tried to generate it, uh, failed to connect to the database, unfortunately. Uh, then it drives the process to generate the data using the CSV that has been generated from the first process, okay? So this way it allows us to link different artifacts that we have created in our system okay for example if we go to data activities and activity explorer so whatever activities we have already built here okay those can be leveraged and can be connected together to look at the bigger picture okay while designing this pipeline you can uh, execute it from here, debug it from here, okay, to get uh, all sense of information, what exactly is happening in the system, how things are flowing down, how all the data is flowing down. So uh, we keep track of each and every step. Now, if we have a look at another example, which is, uh, um, say we have, we are, there is a migrate, migration scenario where we want to move, you, where we want to move some data from Postgres to SQL Server, and then we want to call some API, so we want to generate some payload, payload for it. Okay, so here what we are doing is we are generating some data in Postgres system. Okay, there is some mapping that needs to happen between when we are migrating the data from Postgres to SQL Server, then we are generating the data in SQL Server database, and then we are creating some uh, XML files to based on the generated data and maybe some information that you want to provide while creating those uh, uh, XML messages, okay, or JSON messages. So either you can execute it from here, okay, or you can execute using a server process which will be exposed to the end user, okay. So if I say I want to use pending, rejected, and the cream rate limit is 117 or 1017, doesn't matter. And this is our SQL Server database for uh, our uh, messages, the, the payload messages. We want uh, our organization type to be corporate and true. Our um, current rating is A minus. And let's go ahead and execute this. Uh, it's most probably going to fail because it uh, seems like the database server is down uh, based on the previous message. But uh, this pipeline gives you an idea how multiple available artifacts can be connected together okay and while it's executing it goes on and shows you which steps have been performed and uh, what are the next steps is uh, it's going to follow so yeah it's uh, there's another example say uh, we want we have a system okay we have a database we want to validate it against the soft keys that we have provided and then uh, subset the data mask it then uh, uh, use that data to generate it in another database okay so or clone it to another database now if we have a look at the model here, okay, what we are perform what we are doing here is we are validating our database here, okay. You can provide uh, all kind of uh, inputs to it, whatever your this particular data activity that you have designed earlier expects as parameter inputs, okay. Then you provide, then we are subsetting it, okay. And if the action is has been performed correctly, we reset the sequence mask the database and then use this data to push it to our uh, another database so uh, let me see if uh... 
Okay, so um, yeah, just kind of running you guys through um, a few of the different updates that we've been working on over the past couple of months. Um, first one to kind of touch on up here is the Kanban board. So we spent quite a bit of time actually reworking this and kind of giving it more of a, a modern look and feel. Um, this is really, really useful for people who want to use Modeler whilst tracking their work. Um, so you'll see we have <clears throat> these different columns and these different buckets. These basically will allow you to uh, track the model throughout its life cycle. So, you know, we're, we're, yeah, as you would normally expect, right, you've got sort of the backlog phases <clears throat> moving eventually to in progress when the model's been working, been worked on. Um, and then eventually reviewing it, done, and then either approved or, or rejected. Um, we've added lots of different UI elements into here to kind of make it feel um, nice and easy to use. Um, I think also this is a pretty important piece of the puzzle of, of making sure that people know what they're doing within the tool um, and also kind of monitoring what people are doing as well. So as you'll see here by these couple of screenshots, um, I can focus in on what Mantas has working, it is working on at the moment, or I can uh, look, for example, here at the top uh, at basically what, what I'm working on and kind of help track that throughout the different cycles. Um, and then the second update, core update to, to look at, or to sort of talk about really, is the um, uh, requirements to models in our modeler AI piece. So over the last couple of product update webinars and you've probably seen in some of our marketing material as well um, we released the um, sort of initial version of modeler ai um, that's essentially uh, an ai enabled um, quality modeler so having ai assistance along the way to help you model um, kind of reduce those barriers to entry to modeling um, and actually kind of be, being that massive accelerator as well so making people get to value faster so actually being you know going from this what could be quite a, a chunky in this instance requirement document um into something that is visual and, and can describe like a larger end-to-end -end process um so th this is one of the kind of the the feature of many features to be honest we we have added and we will be adding on the modeler ai front um so again similarly to our enterprise test data AI offering if you anybody's particularly interested or wants to see it in more detail um, then then please do reach out and we've been working on lots more um, so in our knowledge base you can go through and have a look at some of the key headlines and some of the key things that that we've been working on on the modeler side of things um, and yeah I mean there's a lot more a lot more to come in in, in Q4 and beyond so um yeah we'll hope to Hope to give you some more updates uh, at the end of uh, at the end of Q4. So a bit brief there, but Mantas, thanks, thanks very much. Awesome, cheers, George. Cool. So getting back to where we were. So uh, I mean, I hope everyone's enjoyed the updates, and thank you, Ben, uh, Shash, and George for presenting. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, please leave them in the Q and A box. Um, so I do have a question, Ben. Uh, are there any uh, sneak peeks uh, of upcoming updates you can give us? Anything to look out for, apart from, of course, enterprise test AI capabilities? So I would say there's a there's a couple of bits that we are excited and we're sort of actively planning for. Um, I actually say the AI, AI stuff is much further ahead than uh, we thought it would be. We were really sort of trying to take that to the next level and sort of discussing with a lot of um, active customers at the moment around what does that future look like? Where are some of the key sort of um, pieces to go and tackle? Uh, data cloning is something that does seem to kind of crop up in uh, uh, as, as an element, as we sort of did this morning. Uh, it's already kind of there. So it, it's amazing how we can kind of leverage it alongside of our tooling to, to really push us along. Um, the, I think the, the other side of things of really trying to um, sort of learn from ourselves in terms of 
we're trying to give our user base the ability to leverage our platform in conjunction with AI um, to have this sort of virtual data engineer. And I think that as a concept to, to help remove silos, to make sure that requirements are up to date, that we are getting high data coverage and high testing. So sort of one of our core goals and something that we're going to sort of actively work on over the next quarter. You should see a ton of, if you follow myself or James or George, uh, or the Curiosity account on LinkedIn, we post there quite a lot in terms of these updates and, and certainly will be. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're interested, if you've got ideas, if there are things you want to discuss privately off, uh, off this sort of call, feel free to reach out to myself, um, George or Mantas, happy to schedule a session and, and see what's sort of most beneficial for, for you guys and how you're using the product. So some really exciting stuff on the future, uh, in the future. And the good news is it's actually, we're right at the cusp of it. So yeah, very exciting. Awesome. Thank you, Ben. We do have a lot of promotional uh, marketing demos and bite-sized videos that we have produced for Enterprise Test Data AI quality, quality modeler AI capabilities that uh, I'm just going to make sure to include in tomorrow's follow-up uh, alongside the recording and slides. Uh, so please look out for that. Additionally, we are hosting a webinar in October on the new era of test data, where we'll be exploring all things test data, right? But also making, you know, we'll be showing off a lot of these AI features in that webinar as well. So please, uh, you know, head to our website, go follow us on, you know, socials to find those. And I think uh, that's that. So I'm going to start to wrap it up here. So thanks again for everyone who joined and for the questions and my colleagues for the great presentation. If you'd like to carry on the conversation, following the product update, there are a number of ways you can get in touch. If you'd like to learn more or still have questions, please get in touch with either George or Ben via email. If you know a colleague who might be interested in our product updates, then please share the recording and future updates with them. And finally, please follow Curiosity on LinkedIn and Twitter or visit our website to stay up to date with our latest updates. All of these links and slides will be shared with you in an email follow-up tomorrow. I'll, again, like I said, I'll also share a range of videos and playlists that highlight a lot of the updates that we featured uh, today, but that might not be public yet. Uh, so please look out for those if you want to learn more. Those will be a great resource for you to uh, watch. Cool. And details on the upcoming Q4 2024 product update webinar will also be shared soon. So look out for your email invitations. And yeah, I think all that remains to be said is a huge thank you to everyone for joining and a massive thank you to George and Ben for presenting today and Shash. So cool. Thank you. See you in our next product update webinar. Cheers. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>